welcome. I'm so excited that you're here and I'm super excited to share with you this technique that has completely changed the way I paint. So to get started, I wanted to just tell you a little bit of, about who I am and how I got to this point. My name is Tracy. I was a decorative painter for many years and then a muralist for 15 years. And after about 15 years of painting murals, I went to uh, paint some paintings for our own home and I found out that I had no idea what my style was. I wanted them to be, you know, very personal and things I loved and I didn't know, I didn't know where to start. So I got on Pinterest as we all do and I imitated different people's styles and nothing felt right, nothing felt real. I didn't connect with anything. And so that's about five years after that, when I realized I had come up with this technique that had helped me figure out my style. And it's a process that I followed uh, for many years. Every morning when I first get up, I do it. And it's also something I use as a warm up before each uh, painting that I paint. So uh, you'll see in the how to video, kind of the process and how it works. I'll talk as we're going through. And I found that um, in working with other artists and showing them this technique that, um, and, even, and especially with myself, one of the biggest things that I had to overcome was the triggers that come up, the critiques and the judgments and all those things that go on in your head while you're painting, the fears even. Some people get very fearful about, you know, how, what's this going to look like? Am, am I going to like it? Are people going to judge me for it? So uh, we're going to talk about that as we go through and uh, hopefully that th that's helpful for you. Also, um, if you have been a painter for many years and you're not a watercolor artist, you um, may not enjoy working with watercolors, but just give this a try because um, watercolor is amazing for how you can't control it. The water and the paint does what it's going to do. and it's really, I've found, I've tried doing different techniques in other mediums. It's the best medium for learning how to loosen up in your art. So this is not about perfection. It's not about selling a painting. It's not about putting a painting um, on your wall or even liking a painting. This is, in fact, you may hate it and that's okay. This is just about having fun playing um, getting used to the brush in your hand, getting used to the paint flow, getting used to colors and how they mix. Um, whether you're an artist for many years or you're just starting out, this is going to be a game changer for you. So just enjoy it. Just remember what it was like to sit and paint and time would zip by when you were a kid and you just enjoyed the process and uh, it was just so fun and it didn't matter how it turned out. So I recommend starting with a very small palette. I have four colors only that I'm using. Well, five if you include the neutral. I have Azo Yellow from M. Graham, Mayan Orange from Danielle Smith, Opera Pink, love that color, from Danielle Smith, Helio Blue uh, from Schminky, and then I do think I add a neutral in there too. Um, neutral gray, neutral tint, I think from Danielle Smith, but just use what you have. Uh, don't go out and buy anything for this. If you already have watercolor paint, use some colors that excite you and that you love. I don't recommend using a student grade watercolor paper. Uh, you're not going to get the flow. It sometimes even has, has lines in it, but you're not going to get the flow that you will get that you see I'm getting in the video and it's gonna be frustrating for you. So I'm using cold press 140 pound, 300 gram uh, watercolor paper. So um, just enjoy this. Oh, the other thing is I have a post-it. I always have a post-it note with an intention. So you'll see that in the video. Um, write something when you do this in your time, write something that in, inspires you, that lights you up, that makes you feel happy and joyful. It's a reminder to keep your mind in a positive place and not let those triggers pop up. So just enjoy, please stay to the very end. I'm gonna show you some of the things I do with these paintings if they do turn out good in the end. So stay on for that. 
and please let me know this, did this work for you did you enjoy it was it fun is it something that you think you can work into your creative uh, practice let me know give me some feedback i really appreciate it have fun okay so i'm going to get started here with um taping down my watercolor paper i have my paper pre-cut a little bit larger than a uh, legal size envelope and I like to do that so that um, I can cut it down to send it as a card if I do like it and um, so I have that kind of prepared here and ready to go uh, the other thing that you're gonna want to have um, by you is a paper plate or a plastic you don't want paper that's not gonna work <laughs> a plastic plate I have one um, also, I've got my two brushes um, and all of my colors. Again, I have um, as a yellow, Mayan orange, opera pink, helio, turquoise blue, and I also add a um, neutral tint, Daniel Smith at the at the end. Uh, I have my post-it there with my light heart to joy. So I can refer to it when those triggers that we talked about come up. And um, uh, oh, to mention my brush sizes, I use uh, either a round 14 or 12 um, regular round brush, or I also really love a dagger. And I have a 10 millimeter 3 8 Royal and Lang Nickel. I think I got that at Dick Blick. I can't remember. Maybe Michael's. Um, I have a spray bottle there by me. And I also have uh, paper towels. And uh, just a little bit here on if you use cheap student grade paper, what that looks like when it dries. See the um, lines that you get, kind of a linear look. So. Uh, that is one of the reasons why I like to use kind of a medium um, paper and I'm showing the envelope I I use well, I have a million of these legal size envelopes so that's why I'm cutting them but you if you have you know whatever you have you can cut them to the size that's going to fit if you want to make them make a card out of it I just kind of think about that ahead of time but have no plans or intentions for my painting, this painting, other than lighthearted joy, enjoying myself and enjoying the process and just being creative, allowing myself that. Now, the advantage of having a nice size um, plastic plate is you can see the thickness. Uh, I've noticed a lot of new um, painters to watercolor add way too much paint. The, the water to paint ratio is way too heavy on the paint side. So um, I think if you're just starting, use a, a big plate, not a small um, palette. I just am showing the, <clears throat> the spraying, what I'm doing with the spraying here of the paper. Now this is a little tricky too because new artists, um, if you've worked with watercolor, you know what this is supposed to look like and you know how much water should go on the paper. But if you're if you're new, you kind of don't really have a reference for that. So that's what I'm trying to zoom in there and show. Um, I even use slightly tinted water so that you can see. You're getting not so much water that you have pools and puddles. I had a hair there. Um, but enough water to where when you tilt it, you do, you get uh, just a little bit of, of dripping. You know, you can always go back over it and add more water. I try not to spray again after I start putting color on because it can do some really funky things unless I want to do that. Um, and then I'm I'm mixing here that Azo Yellow, M. Graham Azo Yellow. I just love the vibrancy of that, that yellow. Uh, I had just way too much paint but it, I am keeping it fairly, see how pretty that is? I am keeping it fairly thick because you want it to grab into the water and pull. See how the water's pulling it? But you are getting some translucent areas. Now, if your paint is too thick, 
it's going to look really solid. It's going to just look like acrylic paint. And <clears throat> now I am going back in with some uh, water, just added water to my brush there. I'm going in with the Mayan orange that Danielle Smith Mayan orange is so beautiful and I love the play between the azo yellow and the Mayan orange on the top little section there um, how it's kind of pulling into you're getting those lines there I love that now I did have a little section here I had to cut out because I took a little moment for myself and <laughs> I was judging and, and crit critiquing what I had so far and I was wanting to over think it and fuss with it so I just had to stop for a minute and look at my post-it and of course with watercolor you can't take too much time but then I refocused um, this is the opera pink Danielle Smith the my favorite color uh, of all watercolors <laughs> that I have is the opera pink I love it um, and then I'm going back in with just a little bit more water and adding some water in places I'm just working really um off of a gut feeling in tuitionally <laughs> is that a word <laughs> off my intuition told me add more water and uh, this is the helio turkis blue i don't know if i'm saying that right from schminky um and without overthinking again just pop in these colors and see the play between the the purple that that came about from the mix of the red and the blue. I love that. It's just so pretty. And uh, if I had tried to get that, I could have probably never made that happen. So this is the the fun thing about watercolor and allowing it to do what it wants to do and not overthinking and not controlling anything. Now, I have no shapes in my head whatsoever, but I'm already seeing shapes. Uh, and so that is, that's the hard thing. <laughs> I've done this so much that I can really tune it out and um, just put it out of my mind so it doesn't influence at all any decision I'm making about what's happening on the, the paper. But uh, I'm, I am softening some of the sharp lines that I see. And again, just working very you know, from intuition and not from overthinking. Okay, so this is the point where I notice that most new artists want to overwork the paint and you're gonna start seeing some muddy spots. Um, so really, really, you see me sort of manipulating a little bit, but it's very minimal. Okay, so I'm super excited to see what you all ended up with. Um, if you could post a picture of your your picture before you sketch on it and then after, that would be great. Um, I start with a, a watercolor pencil like this one. Um, here it doesn't matter what brand it probably really doesn't even matter what color you use as long as you can see it so on the cityscape you can see how the blue just really lent itself to the tree line uh, of the city and um, i didn't follow it exactly but that wasn't the case with this this other one on this scene um, i really didn't use the shapes in the watercolor very much just a little bit of the roundiness of the background inspired the flowers the cityscape um, i used a lot more of the the tree line the shapes in the blue to formulate that sketch and you'll find as you get started with sketching you're going to it's going to get easier to see for instance this scene here with the um the seahorse I used the bloom sort of inspired the watery shape there. Um, I had to start with the seahorse. I didn't really see anything else till I got that on there and then I started seeing other things. So if we go back to um, the first drawing here, 
I'm going to just start. I see a dolphin, and um, I don't really draw dolphins, but <laughs> uh, I even see an eye there of a dolphin. And um, once I get the dolphin sketched into the scene and um, very lightly penciled out, then I start to see, well, huh, it looks like the dolphin is shooting up through the water uh, and the water is the um, spraying out from the body of the dolphin. You don't have to follow exactly the shape of the lighter color that's there. Uh, you can go in and outside of the shapes. For instance, with the waves, I'm going to pull it up into the blank part of the paper and then I'll pull it down into the colored red part. So the other thing you're going to want to have is some micron pens. Um, I do have uh, both scenes sketched out with watercolor pencils and then I went back over the top with uh, the micron pen. Oh, it's very, very tiny. I think it's a 005. Um, the watercolor paper is yeah, it's a 005. Uh, it's a little hard on the, the tip on that one because it's so tiny, but the advantage of it is you do get to um, get a little bit more color on there before you completely commit to loving each uh, line. So I go over it with that, and then you can kind of tell what's looking right and what's not. And then uh, you can do a final go over with the um, the next size that I use is either a 05 or a 08. I think I used a 05 on this one, but then um, the final scene you'll see that it is even darker and I did go back over another time with the 08. Some of these I just enjoy sitting in front of watching a movie and playing with, so I'll already have them pretty well um, you know, just kind of the way it is right now, but I'll go over it and darken parts of it and give it some shape and shadow. And you'll see, you can be able to see the difference. Now on the other watercolor, I felt less inspired by shapes and more inspired by what it made me feel. And it, to me, it felt like a field of water, wildflowers, in the background and so I wanted to pop out. I, I suppose I do use the shape a little bit to inspire the shape of the flowers. Um, and once I started drawing them on there, again I saw the grouping of three uh, different flowers there. And it, But it's not a real flower shape, so I guess you would call it more of an abstract flower um, shape there. Okay, so I'm going to show you the final result. Ta-da! <laughs> I fussed quite a bit with the dolphin and darkened the dolphin quite a, quite a lot. You'll see it's much darker in certain areas. Uh, I sat in front of a really good movie, A Hundred Foot Journey, I think it was. Um, I loved it, and I played with that little dolphin while I was watching the movie, and I also worked on the flowers a little bit. And I, I thought I hated the flowers, but I actually kind of liked them. They grew on me. They're funky and abstract and a shape of flower I've never seen before. And I decided I would make a card out of that and also the dolphin. Um, then there's a couple others that I, you might be able to see here. I guess I think it's cropping just a little bit, the, the one. But please let me know how this worked for you. If you um, want more inspiration and ideas, uh, let me know. I'd love to get your feedback on how it's working for you and if it's making a difference in your art, if it's making a difference in your life, if adding a creative um, practice every day or even a few times a week is, if it's helping you at all. I think one of the, the things for me, it's helped um, me to not only loosen up, as I mentioned in my art, but also see things in a more creative way through through my day-to-day -day life. I think um, my, my right brain is a little bit more <laughs> being used a little bit more and it's balanced a little bit more. Um, I feel like it's a mindful practice. You hear that a lot. 
Um, and it works really good for me to just, you know, ground myself to moments uh, in life and not just to be buzzing and busy all the time. Uh, so please give me some feedback and let me know. I'm so thankful that you took the time to watch the video and I would love to see what you ended up with and hear how it's going for you. Thank you so much.